How do you follow what just happened? This is the, not the spot you want to be. Tony DeMarco gets his beautiful award. He has all of his beautiful family up here. They're so functional. They're so functional, the DeMarcos. I don't come from that. I come from dysfunctional. So I want to be related to Tony DeMarco and Susan. I really do. So um, what an honor. What an honor to be here at New Beginnings and really to follow that award. And I'm very grateful. Thank you for having me up here. You know, uh, Lacey Book said something when she spoke. And by the way, give it up for her. She did such a great job. She talked about the, the schools and how the schools are moving toward mechanistic thinking. And we're moving away from vitalistic thinking. And there's another mechanistic school that's coming up in Florida. And I'm not sure that there's four. There may only be three vitalistic schools. But what this comes down to is that we have chiropractic, pure and principled, that is an endangered species. So remember, you are part of the remnant. You are pa part of what is left over to ensure and to make sure that chiropractic not just survives, but thrives. Because we stand on the shoulders of giants, and Tony DeMarco is one of those giants. Jim Dubell is one of those giants, and there's many giants in here that I'll leave out because there's too many to mention. But we must make sure that we take this sacred trust and we carry it and we guard it well. And so that's our job. That's our profession. And a profession has to profess something. And we must profess chiropractic. And the things you're learning here today, the content that you're getting is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I'm probably not going to give you a whole lot of content today. I'm going to give you a whole lot of heart. Would that be OK? Yeah. I'd like to do that. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to I acknowledge the women that are in the room. You know, uh, Liza said this before. She said 50% of our speakers are women. Didn't that what you said before? And I didn't know that. But I came here, you know, I was prompted to really acknowledge and honor the women in this room. So I'd like the women in this room to stand up. Give them a big hand. Because without Susan, there's no Tony DeMarco. Without Randy, there's no Neil Cohen. Without Lacey, there's no Sean Dill. So thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are. God bless you. Fierce and empowered women. That's what we need to ensure that this profession survives. And so we need to encourage, we need to build up, and we need to spur the women on. Not just the women chiropractors. Very important are all the women in this profession. The CAs, all the women, the spouses, we have to spur them on. And I am just so blessed and honored to have a support system like my wife Randy for all these years to be there when I didn't really know exactly where this thing was going to take us. But it took us to some amazing places. And one of the places it took us is to have a relationship with an amazing and wonderful woman, Dr. Irene Gold. Dr. Irene Gold, I've gotten to know her over the past several years, and I'm just so blessed. What a heart this woman has. And I know she doesn't do anything for accolades. 
She does everything all for the right reason. And I just want to say publicly, thank you for being in my life. Thank you for being in my family's life. I truly appreciate that. So Irene is a powerful, fierce, and empowered woman, and someone for you all to look up to. The thing that I'm going to say is that many of us wear a mask. We're hiding who we really are. And it's important that we know ourselves. The greatest gift that you can give yourself is to know yourself. You have to know yourself. You have to know what you believe and why you believe it. Because that will take you to the places that you need to go. You see, because people are attracted to your truth. This woman walks in truth. I'm blessed and honored to know Jenna. And ever since I've met her, she just is so honest about who she is. And that's what makes her the chiropractor that she is and brings all the people into her. That's what brings the people to Irene Gold. So you've got to know who you are. And it's not too late to find out who you are. Jeannie Ohm, you know who you are. I love this. These are the examples. People follow your truth. I did have hair. <laughs> this is about 1979, 1980. I had not received a chiropractic adjustment yet in my life. But what I did receive is my life wife, my life partner, Randy. And she looks to me exactly the same as she did back then. I'm the one that's changed. <laughs> See, I know myself. <laughs> and she has just been an amazing inspiration to me and to my family. I, you know, when we had children, I used to say, you're the best mother in the world. And I still tell her that. She is the best mother in the world. And I'm just so blessed to have her. And there's not enough ground to kiss to honor you, Randy. And I love you so much. This was me, graduation day. I think it was June 13th, 1986, when I walked across the stage at the World Congress Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and received my fake diploma, which is what we got back then from Dr. Sid. They sent you the real one. And I was so proud to have my parents there. And this is my first son, Brian. He's 33. And so this was the fruit of what Randy started bringing me to the chiropractor. And Brian, although he's 33 today, because he was our first child, we call him, or at least I do, the experiment. He was the experiment. And frankly, we weren't that happy with him. <laughs> so we decided to have two more. And those are the two that we had. And those are the ones that became chiropractors. Isn't that wonderful? So we have uh, Michael, who is an incredible human being. This is the kid you really don't worry about. He's got his life planned out. He's in charge. He's driven. He knows what he wants. He's really my retirement. He's the one that's going to make all the money. So I don't have to go into the nursing home. But if I do, it'll be a really high-end one. That's all I can tell you. He's amazing. He just went to Edmonton, Alberta. He drove 41 hours to Edmonton, Alberta to work with a chiropractor in Edmonton who sees about 300 visits a day. And he is already planning to be part of that practice. He put snow tires on his car, he drove there, and he said, Dad, that's where I'm going. And that's the kind of in charge, incredible vision that this young man has. And he didn't get it from me. He got that from his mom. So what a wonderful blessing to have him. And then 
You have the complete antithesis of Michael. You have my daughter, Sarah. By the way, Michael graduates in December, as Randy said. Sarah graduated about a year ago, June. And when Sarah graduated, it's kind of interesting. I call her my butterfly. She's my artist. She's my butterfly. She has no idea what she's doing three hours from now. She's just super spontaneous. And, you know, you've got to love her. She really reminds me of me a lot. Um, I was sort of a little, like, I don't want to say flaky, but I was pretty spontaneous when I was young. And so Sarah reminds me of me, so I have a lot of empathy for her, and I love her, and I've worked with her and worked with her and worked with her. And, you know, it's interesting, this generation of children, um, it, it just doesn't seem like what advice we got when I was a kid works for these people. It just doesn't work. And I was fighting it tooth and nail for the longest time, just fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. And, and I've come to realize you can't fight it. You just can't fight it. You have to learn that they don't want your advice. They just don't want it. And so you can't even suggest anything to them. And so what I've learned is I've learned to say, honey, whatever you want to do, I support you. And you know what? It's worked miracles. It's really worked miracles. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, Sarah, she's always given us a lot of challenges, just a lot of challenges. And then, you know, Irene was uh, teaching her when she was getting through the boards. And we were a little concerned uh, because, you know, Sarah had some challenges getting through the boards, uh, one of the parts. And Irene was gracious enough this is the, the servant that she is. She was gracious enough to fly to my house in South Carolina, stay with us, and teach Sarah. And she taught Sarah, and Sarah, of course, passed the boards. Well, thank the good Lord, she passed the boards. But Irene mentioned something to me during that weekend, and she said, you know, Sarah was in a car accident, and she really might have some damage neurologically. And I was like, I never really thought about that. And Irene kind of enlightened me to that. So my empathy for Sarah grew. But what I didn't understand, and Irene, I'm going to enlighten you today. What I didn't understand is that this incredible and beautiful girl had a secret. She was hiding something. And I couldn't understand why such an incredibly smart and beautiful girl would have so many issues. And she didn't want to listen to my advice. And she didn't want to really seem like she didn't want to change. And then when Irene told me what she told me about the neurological damage, I said, well, you know, that makes sense. But it was deeper than that. And a couple of years ago, it's actually a year ago in July, I came home from an event in Oklahoma City. And Sarah was just doing some things that I wasn't really approving of. And I'm in the car with my son because he came with me. And I'm just going off. I'm saying, I'm going to, I'm just, I can't believe she's doing this. I'm going to, and he, he said something to me that was changed my whole pattern. He said, Dad, you don't know what she's been through. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, I'm just saying, you don't know what she's been through. So she had confided in him, and I knew that at that moment. And so when I got home, although I wanted to challenge her, I did not. So I waited about 24 hours to calm down, and I said, Sarah, what's going on with you? What's going on? I mean, come on. I'm holding your feet to the fire. What's going on? Put her head in her hands 
And she started to cry. And she said, now, she's 29 years old. She said, Dad, I don't know how to tell you this, but when I was 15, I was drugged and raped. And she kept it a secret all these years. And it answered all the questions that I had. It helped me understand who she was. And my response was to hug her and just be there for her. Her mother's response was, give me names, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> and I get it. And she, I didn't want to put her through that pain because it was very painful for her to share what she shared with us. So I let some time go by and I allowed her to go through the things that she needed to go through. And Irene, I have to tell you, you were magnificent with her. You didn't know any of this. Nobody knew any of this. And she just absolutely fell in love with you and looked at you as her grandmother. And that's why I always call you grandma and mama. She was working at Lululemon. She's working at a yoga studio. She's licensed to be a chiropractor. She's not being a chiropractor. And finally, as she went through this change and became aware of her truth, she left Lululemon. She went into her practice full time. And one of the first patients that came into her office was a pastor who had been sexually abused when he was a child. Sometimes the greatest pain that you go through in life will allow you to do the most magnificent things. Her practice is crazy busy right now. She's absolutely in love with chiropractic all over again. She's doing fantastic. And the only reason I'm telling you all this, because this has been hard for us. We've been holding on to this for a while. And people don't know the slings and the arrows that you get thrown at you when you're in leadership, when you're in chiropractic, when you're holding up this flag of truth. You have no idea of what's just out there. And then we had this that we were dealing with as well. I was going to the airport last week. I was heading to Chicago. And um, she told me, hey, Daddy, I did a podcast this, you know, yesterday. And I'm going to send it to you. So Randy sent me the podcast. And I decided to listen to it on my way to Chicago. I mean, on my way to the airport. It was about an hour long. And I have about an hour trip to the airport. And it was the most magnificent podcast I ever heard. I heard this empowered, courageous, incredible woman speak her truth, speak her truth, know her truth, and live her passion. And she spoke about the rape. And she is using this to be this incredible lighthouse for people to come and get healed and get to their next level. So I want to thank you for allowing me to give you these few minutes of my heart. Normally my jam is philosophy. I just love philosophy. You got a lot this morning. And I just wanted you to know that you never know, you never know, you never know what the other person's going through that person coming in your office, that person that you're meeting, that person you're sitting next to at New Beginnings, you never know what they're going through. So be there for them. Be right. Be your truth. Give them your love. And just know that I love you. I love my New Beginnings family. And anything I can do for you, 
I want to do for you. Tomorrow we have the Sherman lunch. We hope to see you there. We're going to have a bunch of our board members here who I honor. They're here today, and I'm sorry I didn't have you stand. I know I only had 20 minutes. I think I'm a minute over. But come to our lunch tomorrow and know that you are supporting Vitalistic Chiropractic when you're supporting Sherman College. God bless you. Thank you so much. Neil Cohen.